Ron Stroman on the road to recovery, undergoing fusion surgery on his cervical spine. Revealed in an Instagram post Friday, he underwent level one fusion surgery on his C4 and C5. The 39-year-old wrote, it was very scary to find out he needed this surgery. He thanked WWE for being there every step of the way, getting him the best care possible. He says, road to recovery starts now. Level 1 Fusion, C4, C5, in the great hands of Dr. Cordover at Andrews Sports Medicine. Great experience considering. Thank you to WWE for always taking the utmost care of us. Scary to find out. I assure you, in the words of the Terminator, I'll be back. Thank you all in advance for the well wishes. So, all the best to Ron Strowman, Adam Scher, and uh, no word on what happened. And if you remember, it was not that long ago that they had that uh, that match where he had that ridiculous spot, which, uh, you know, of course, Tom and I laughed about it before we knew what it was, which, by the way, went up immediately on Twitter, and I got nothing but blowback. <laughs> so anyway, um, he uh, he had that, and then, you know, they told us he had a concussion. And then, like, a week later, he was back in the ring. And I think that was his last match. So I don't know if maybe, you know, whatever happened that gave him the concussion also injured his neck. Or if, you know, this was just wear and tear over a career. But one way or the other, it sucks. All the best to him. And hope he is back very soon. Absolutely. And because this last, let me tell you something about Strowman. People think I don't yeah. like Strowman. Because maybe I've called him a big dummy once or twice. But uh, he was so miles better this last run when he came back. And I don't know what it was. It was just like he got newly motivated. But, I mean, he his promos, his work, he was by far the best giant that they had by miles. And, uh, and it's too bad that now he's down because uh, that was the best run of his career by far. It was. He looked like he had shaved off a little bit of weight and he was in there with Ricochet. And, you know, I'm sure getting released – you know, was a motivating factor when the call came to come back that you want to take as much advantage of this as possible. But a little bit, you know, to the side of that, James Andrews, if he's not, should be in every sports Hall of Fame everywhere. He should make it into the WWE Hall of Fame. Yes, it's not his hands that are doing the surgeries for the most part on these folks now that are getting them. But that orthopedic center in Alabama has been an absolute godsend for every single athlete, not the least of which have been professional wrestlers. And however that started, whether it started with Turner and that, you know, assimilation of those guys going over there, I'm not exactly sure. But thankfully, this has been the case where they have had such an open door and been willing to work with WWE and all of these promotions to get these people fixed up. Matt Jackson had to obtain a special license in order to deliver an exploding superkick to John Moxley. Perform the move during the Anarchy in the Arena match, which Dave, by the way, you want to know what he gave that match? Read the Observer! So anyway, Dave Meltzer reported today's Observer. He was required to get a fire performer's license from the state of Nevada. <laughs> I get it. I, get I could talk about this for years. <laughs> So, hold on a second. What? What is a fire performer? Is someone who, like, juggles, you know, fiery gimmicks or whatever? Yeah, remember when Samojo had his people out there and they were doing the fire dance and all that sort of stuff? That sort of thing. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, I go to Vegas. Yeah? I want to get a license to uh, dance with fire. So, I, like, they're going to want to see me, you know, like, do whatever, right? Yeah. See me handle it or... or The point of this is... Nobody Matt Jackson isn't him. a fire performer. He's a wrestler who wanted to do a spot with fire. And so you're telling me it's that easy to just get a fire performer's license? Sure. Like, hey, throw a super kick, buddy. All right, you can kick. We'll let you blow up someone's face with a uh, firecracker. It seems like, what? This well, seems like I'm, something you should have to work for like a period of years and display competency in well, the art of working with fire. How many times are you going to do the, where do you practice doing the firework from the boot so you can put together a well, highlight exactly. to show the folks? I mean, <laughs> what the heck? I mean, nobody got hurt. I'm not saying that, you know, he shouldn't have done it. He's done many super kicks in his life. But it just seems like it's pretty easy to get. My point is, it shouldn't be easy to get a fire performer's license. It seems like that should be hard. Maybe there's levels. You know, if you're actually like, you know, 
throwing things up in the air? I don't know. It just seems like, you know, it's sure it's a money grab from the state of Nevada there. But in case the, you know, firework goes off and then, you know, kills a bunch of people, I'm sure they'd like to know and go back and see, you know, who approved this and all that other stuff. So I don't have really any problem with them dotting I's and crossing T's in this situation. So what's, uh, you know, what about Jericho when he throws his fireball? Does he need a license? Or does he just not throw fireballs in Vegas? No, he needs to be slapped for doing that. With And everybody needs to be slapped for doing that because he does it too much now. It's ridiculous that he can just burn anybody he wants and then there's no follow-up to it whatsoever. It's just kind of ridiculous at this point. Plus, we all know it's flash paper and that stuff's expensive. It is? It used to be. When you didn't have any money and you were trying to do it to throw fire? Yeah. Oh, I remember that. Try something here. <laughs> What's that? On Amazon.com. Okay. Because I, I, uh, I'm a Prime subscriber. That's, ah. That's actually, that's actually how I get my own Twitch. I'm not kidding. Flash paper. Flash? This is the first thing that comes up. Flash paper, magic sheets, fire. <laughs> yeah. Let's see here. Truth in advertising. Uh, 50, 20 centimeter... Uh, $8.99. Is it that low now? Those what, magic shops. What are you, poor? About 25 years ago, back in the day, trying to find that. So one, you actually had to go find it, and you had to find a magician shop and somebody that had those types of gimmicks there. Although the good part about finding those types of gimmick stores is they usually had a room that had, like, brass knuckles and other, you know, unique items in there. Not for, like, weapon reuse, just for show. I am looking at a thing right now on Amazon. That is nineteen ninety nine, and it is in a silver baggie, and the label says, and I quote, "Ball of Fire gimmick." Not a lie. That's the gimmick. You can get a you can get a, a dual flash gun. It'll shoot two fireballs for twenty dollars. 20, that's it? Yeah. 20 bucks for a dual shooter. Huh. So, yeah, I, I don't know what your gimmick is, brother. It was 25 years ago, too. I got I to gotta step into the 2023s here. Wednesday's episode Damn, of Dynamite. It's actually a lot longer ago than that. It was like 30-something years ago. Yeah, because you're old. Yeah, I am. Wednesday's episode of Dynamite, up 10% from last week. Best audience for the show since March 22. 18 to 49, point two nine. 923,000 viewers. It did, uh, it was down, it was up 10% in viewers and down 10% of the demo, which is kind of weird. Um, tied for the third highest rating in 18 to 49, compared to the same week in 2022. Overall audience down 3.9%, 18 to 49 down 27.5%. So, uh, yeah, the WWE year over year is up. In, uh, you know, ratings and demo, and AW is uh, generally down. But we're going to see what happens as uh, Collision debuts, and uh, we head into the summer with a lot of very big shows. I wonder what the big show was on Wednesday, because I'm obviously out of the loop on this. I don't think that there was any basketball on, but when you look at the Well, the showbiz night- chart is delayed. So when you look at the last 90 days of the... Uh, WrestleNomics put out there when you look at the last 90 days of the average viewership I mean the 18 to 49 was dead on to what they've always you know for the most part done and the rating was you know significantly up from what it's been you know probably due to the lack of competition it's just okay where did the 18 to 49s go was there a special Vanderpump rules you know post show or something like that that took place that siphoned some people I don't know well, let's see. This says uh, no major sports competition, so there is that. You can also find me at Vincent Verhey on Cameo. Oh, my God. I will send you a happy birthday wish. <laughs> I will send you a happy anniversary wish. Granny, you ever thought about being on Cameo? What is it? My computer, my front page is uh, Microsoft, and I go through there and see all kinds of lies and stuff like that. And here you are. You're doing a commercial. And then you had me on there when I was ranting about WrestleMania. Did you get my permission? Oh, okay. Wait, wait, what? Just, what? Just stop You're... for a second. Your front page is Microsoft. 
I yeah. guess. I don't even know what that means. Your front page is Microsoft. What do you mean you go through there and see all the lies? What does that mean? Well, they have a whole bunch of stuff, you know, about this and that and this and that, you know, all kinds like of news. Like the news? News? I don't post the videos. I don't edit the videos. If you saw some video or some commercial, I have no idea what it is or where it came from or who edited it together. I'm sure it was someone from the site. It's not, no, Tony, it's not Tony, and it's not Dave, and it's not me. And it's not Vinny who's busy doing cameos. That's right. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.